In 1920s, New York had approximately 6 million citizens and it was a hub of manufacturing, commerce, and culture. Immigrants entering through the poor, as well as those arriving by road and train, contributed to the city's prosperous economy. In 1923, New York generated one-twelfth of all manufacturing in the country. Between 1917 and 1925, over 200,000 African Americans relocated to New York as part of the massive movement of the African Americans from south to the northern cities. Many were lured to the cultural activity of Harlem on the city's east side, in addition to the pull of war. In the 1920s, almost everyone crossed the Atlantic Ocean by steamship, businessmen traveling to meet international clients, entertainers on tour, and leisure vacationers purchased passage aboard ocean ships of all sizes. They sailed with large groups of emigrants to the United States and emigrants returning home. Each week, the Leviathan and her 1,100-person crew transported up to 3,400 people to and from the New York City. The Leviathan was the largest American commerce ship of its day, built in Germany in 1940, but utilized as an American troop ship during World War I. Despite the fact that the United States began to restrict emigration in 1924, New York in the 1920s had a sizable emigrant population. Foreign-born citizens contributed significantly to the city's economic, social, and cultural life. When America's ready-made garment industry was based in New York, emigrants supplied a large portion of labor for the nation's suits, jackets, and gowns. Many African-American artists and performers were lured to the New York in the 1920s to participate in the Harlem's thriving jazz and blue music scene. Fletcher Henderson, a Georgia native, had it the most successful African-American jazz ensemble of the decade. Coleman Hawkins from the Kansas City, Duke Ellington in Washington, D.C., King Oliver, Jelly Roll Morton, Louise Armstrong in New Orleans, and Bassie Smith from Chattanooga were among the other musical geniuses that made New York their home in the 20s. Jazz, with its southern origins, became a potent representation of the New York's cultural life. It was spread internationally through records, radio broadcasts, and live performances. In the 1920s, New Yorkers seeding sports pleasure turned the first and foremost to Babe Ruth's bat. His success established attendance records as well. The Yankees generated more than $1 million in earnings from 1921 through 1930. The team used $2.5 million of that money to create a new Yankee Stadium in 1923. For bleacher seats, Ticket for the new stadium's inaugural day in 1923 were 25 cents. Pro football was significantly less popular until the formation of the Giants in 1925. After Congress approved professional boxing in 1920, boxers like Jack Dempsey helped to expand the sport beyond its ethnic and working class roots by driving fans of all background who packed Madison Square Garden to see matches. Many of the illnesses that had endangered New Yorkers before to the 1920s were eradicated by 19th century technologies that brought fresh water into the city and carried away its sewage and rubbish. The 1918 flu pandemic killed 30,000 New Yorkers, all that it was over before the turn of the century. As a result, the majority of the main causes of death for New Yorkers in the 1920s are still prevalent today cardiovascular disease, pneumonia, infant mortality, and cancer. Tuberculosis, the fifth leading cause of mortality, has largely been forgotten as a result of the extensive use of antibiotics. However, between 1926 and 1930, TB killed 4,574 New Yorkers every year. Tuberculosis disproportionately impacted African Americans and other newcomers to the New York with inadequate financial resources. However, because to the public health measures such as TB clinics established in Harlem, the number of the tuberculosis fatalities in 1930 was one quarter that of the 1900s. By the 1920s, New York Harbor's waterborne commerce encompassed hundreds of boats and tens of thousands of passengers every day. Their safety was dependent on the upkeep of the harbor's navigational ads. This was the crew's duties on board the U.S. The engine room of the lighthouse service, Tender Oak, can be reviewed below. Staten Island was the Oak's home port. Its four commanders and 23 crew members delivered supplies, gasoline, mail, and transportation to nearby lighthouses and lightships. 
They also installed, painted, and maintained the harbor's buoy, bulk signal, and beacon network. New York Harbor has long been one of the world's busiest. Ocean-going steamers arrived and departed the harbor every 20 minutes in 1920. Coastal freighters, harbor tugs, river steamers, and other ships shared the water in piers that lined the Hudson River's banks in the Lower Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and New Jersey. The ship models shown here are recreation of vessels. That were part of the New York's active harbor traffic in the 1920s. At the end of the 19th century, large wooden schooners were the major transporters of the bulk cargoes, such as coal, timber, stone, and ice. By the 1920s, steamers had absorbed the majority of this commerce. The sea was one of the schooners that was still in service between 1919 and 1921. Sea Mangalay Jr. operated out of New York with an eight-man crew. It transported timber, clay, pilings, gypsum, barrel staves, and asphalt from Nova Scotia to Ireland to the West Indies. It was sunk in 1922. The Industrial Revolution, which began in the 19th century and concluded in the 1920s, gave Americans a plethora of new things to buy and enjoy. At the same time, credit growth enabled middle-class Americans to purchase consumer items in record quantities. Between the end of the World War I and the end of the 1920s, for example, more than 500,000 new automobiles were registered in New York City. In 1926, the typical family's annual cost of living in New York City was $1,659, or $31.92 per week. Food was the most expensive, about $11.94 per week, followed by housing, which is $7.40 per week. A subway journey. That year cost five cents, the same amount as when the subway first opened in 1904, and remained so until rates were raised to 10 cents in 1948. Since colonial times, America has been active in worldwide trade. The United States exported raw resources and imported manufactured goods through the first half of the 19th century. As the country industrialized, it became a significant exporter of factory-made goods. Ranging from sewing machines to automobiles, it has recently imported manufactured items and exported agricultural products, as well as banking and computer-related services. Since the 1880s, the United States has been a key role in the world economy. New York City has played an important role in the history of the American foreign trade. Half of America's imports and exports passed through the city in the 1920s. However, New York's significance as a port began to dwindle in the 1960s when container ships relocated to terminals elsewhere in the region, and New York's transportation issues made it more difficult to get trucks and trains from the ports out of the city. Millions of emigrants were no longer transported to New York aboard ocean liners. Manufacturers relocated out of the city in search of cheaper labor. However, New York has recreated itself as a new type of global city. It's a hub of international finance, banking, art, culture, and professional services now more than ever. The new New York is a city that's connected to the global economy, not just via the commodities it creates, buys, sells, and transports, but also through ideas, culture, and financial and information services it produces. Since the 1920s, much has changed in New York. Alcohol, which was outlawed during Prohibition, is now freely available. Manufacturing has mainly moved offshore. Babe Ruth has become a sports icon. Other aspects of life in New York City, however, remains familiar. Most notably, family migrations. As a result, New York City remains a crossroads for those new to the nation, as well as their descendants who seek to retrace their ancestors' first timid steps on the streets around Broadway. This is New York in 1920s. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next video.